Hello, everyone. I'm standing next to this uh, brief list of the seven deadly sins. And as you can see, pride, greed, avarice, envy, and wrath. And today, we're going to talk about that one sin that everyone talks about, and that is the sin of lust. And the sin of lust is an inordinate craving for sexual satisfaction. And it can be done either publicly or it can be done within our hearts. And what the Lord is trying to teach us is that when we marry, when two people stand before God's altar and they say to one another, I take you, I take you, when they say those words, that becomes a sacrament. Now the word sacrament is an interesting word because it has holy, sacra, mentus, sacramentus. Mentus means a sacred sign. And it's a sacred sign that we take with the one person that we believe God is calling us to love in this life above all others. When we enter the sacrament of marriage, we are saying to the whole world, this person from this day forward will be my husband, will be my wife, etc. And that's why when we attend weddings, you'll always see a father, a big tough guy, you know, walking his bride down the aisle, or a mother in her gentle, loving way, teary-eyed or full of emotion, because they know, they know that they no longer are going to be number one. They know that they're going to now be number two, or if their children may be number three, etc. And and that's okay. Because that's the way life is. When we experience the loss of a loved one, what do we feel within our hearts? We feel that emotion. We feel that loss. We feel that longing for that person to be near us again. And when that person is not near us, when that person's been taken from us, we're feeling that emptiness, that loss. And when we attend a wedding, the emotions are in some ways the same, but they're different. Because where there is a sacrament, a holy sign, we have to understand that what we're saying to everyone is that this is a sign that is indissolvable. Notice that word, indissolvable. And it's indissolvable because we believe in our hearts that when we say, I take you for the rest of my life, we're really saying to that person and to so many others that you're the number one and the only one. Now, I have to tell you that as a priest, one of the happiest days that I have is when I meet with a couple and they share with me the news that they want to get married. I just love that. I just love the fact that I can be a part of witnessing and blessing this union in the name of our Lord Jesus. And truly, what a gift that is. I mean, how can you not be happy for a couple who have come to love each other so much that they want to give up their former way in order to build the one union that should exist between the two of them? And when I stand at the altar, and when they stand before me, and when I say, you may now join your hands and declare your consent. I've been a priest for a little bit more than 51 years, and I still feel those goosebumps. Can you imagine that? Not because I'm Italian American, but it's just such a beautiful thing to see that at that moment, at that moment, they're honestly saying to each other, I love you more than anyone or anything. How can, how can you not be moved by that? Lust 
on the other hand, is saying just the opposite. Lust is saying, no, no, no. Lust is saying, you know, you may have felt that way when you were young, or you may have felt that way when you were a lot younger than you are now, but you know, you're now a new person. You're now a new man, a new woman, whatever. Now is the time for you to really say who you want to marry. That's what lust does. Because what it does is, once it enters your heart, and once it captures your soul, it's very hard to get rid of it. Very, very hard to say, you know, I just can't do this anymore. I've got to find the person that's going to fulfill my sexual desires. St. Paul very beautifully wrote in one of his letters these words. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are fornication, uncleanliness, immodesty, and luxury of, of, um, sp of spirit. In other words, the luxury of being able to do whatever you want. And we're living in a culture today where this is not so much the exception, not anymore. This is now becoming almost like a norm. This is becoming a standard, so to speak. There used to be a time when a couple announced their engagement, and that's beautiful. And they would live apart because the period of engagement was a time when we say, we're going to marry each other, and now we're going to spend the next months in preparing where we're going to live, how we're going to go about things, all the preparation for marriage that we so often think about. But today, that's not the case. Today, the case is often, well, we're just going to get married. We've been living together, and hopefully, please God, we'll be able to continue to be the couple that we are. And you know what's interesting? Very interesting. Where couples have lived together before marriage, those are the ones that are of the highest risk of their marriage not working out. And why is that? Don't take it from me. Take it from the University of Chicago Department of Sociology or take it from several other studies run either by our government or other agencies, and they all say the same thing. And what are they saying? Lust, lust, lust. And that's sad. And it's sad because it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way at all. Secondly, it doesn't have to be that way because when children come along, the number one person in your life has to be the person you, at the altar, said, I take you, above all others, above all other things, I choose you. And that's the gift of love in the true sense of that word. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or conceited. It doesn't brood over injuries. It only rejoices in what remains true. Those are the words that St. Paul wrote when he was writing to the Christians who were a bit at each other's throats because they were in disagreement. But he wrote it because he wanted them to understand that the greatest of all gifts is the gift of love. So we're going to stop here. We're going to end with a blessing until we meet again. And we pray this blessing upon you and all those whom you love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.